everyone, and today I'm going to show you how to make your PowerPoint presentations more accessible, as well as what Section 508 is and how to be compliant with it. My name is Camille Holden and I'm a PowerPoint expert and coach. I help busy professionals save hours of time and gain peace of mind by helping them master the software that they use every day rather than letting the software be the master of them. According to the World Health Organization, more than 314 million people are visually impaired around the world and an additional 466 million people are living with hearing loss. That means there's a very high chance that someone in your audience is affected. So how do we make our presentations more accessible for all people? Let's take a look. Okay, so accessibility in PowerPoint. Let's take a look. So first let's talk about some general tips for how to make your presentations easier to read and understand. And keep in mind, these are really great tips and best practices that you can use for any kind of presentation, even if you're not trying to make it more accessible. So feel free to incorporate these into your presentations at all times. The first thing to talk about is text. Um, some important things to keep in mind are making sure that you're using a big font size, so at least 24 points. Obviously, that will depend on the font that you're using, but you want to make sure that the text is very big, uh, especially if you're presenting in a large room. Uh, it is helpful even to go into the room and see from the back, make sure that your text is very easy to read. Uh, you also want to make sure that you limit the text. Uh, that you have on a slide because it can be very uh, hard to differentiate between words and, uh, and so keeping it minimal is much easier to read. Also use serif fonts, so fonts like Arial Verdana, Helvetica, uh, Calibri, those are all fonts that don't have serifs um, and so they are typically easier for people to read, especially anyone who has any uh, visual impairment. Avoid italics. Uh, if necessary, again, italics and any kind of fancy font or font styling is going to be harder to read. So if you need to emphasize something, you can use the bold element or you can also increase the font size or you could potentially uh, work with color as well. Now, speaking of color, uh, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you're always employing the, the concept of contrast. So you want to make sure that there's high contrast between the background and text. Um, between uh, elements inside of an image, uh, etc. Any other item that you have on your slide needs to have high contrast, otherwise things tend to blur into each other and be hard to read. In terms of brightness, one thing to keep in mind is a white background like I'm using can potentially uh, have a lot of glare and be very hard to read in a, a dark room, for example. So if you're going to be in a dark room, perhaps using a dark background with white text overlaid on top of it would be easier. So those are just some best practices, but specifically uh, that makes it a lot easier for people who are experiencing visual impairment to, um, to read and to process the information in your presentation. Now, you want to make sure that you avoid reds and greens. There are quite a few people who are colorblind, uh, and so using reds and greens makes it very difficult for those people to distinguish elements uh, within an image, within graphics, etc. And so uh, that is just something very important to keep in mind, and you want to make sure that if you do have to use red and greens, and I'll show you an example in a minute, that the brightness is adjusted so that, or that you have text overlaid on top of it so that it is, uh, there's an extra element there to indicate the difference between the two things. So this is a slide, for example, at the top we have two different tables, one that uses color only to distinguish between um, the different status of, of a project. So red typically means, you know, all good, yellow is, you know, not great, and red is not, not good at all. So um, in, in the example on the right, I have actually added text on top of it. So maybe you do need or you do want to keep using yellow, uh, green, and red. Uh, this may be harder for colorblind people to see, but if you add the text on top, which is really not that difficult to do, then it makes it easier for them to, uh, to see. The same thing for the charts below. We have two examples uh, with uh, the example on the left uh, here is using uh, two colors that are very similar in, um, in sort of darkness or brightness. And so when you turn it into gray, it looks like this. It's very hard to distinguish between the two of them. If you use uh, it's not as aesthetically pleasing, but this is a lot easier to read for someone who experiences colorblindness because they can distinguish between the brightness and know that this line is different from this line. So those are some things to keep in mind. 
Now, the other thing you want to do <laughs> here in this example, we had a chart. In general, you would like to av avoid using charts because charts have a lot of data. It is very hard to grasp very quickly. If anyone has dyslexia or any kind of visual impairment, um, it, charts are just confusing. If you're trying to make a point, a statement with a chart, you can just make that point. Use the data, make the statement, and you don't need necessarily to show everything else that's in there. Again, uh, keep it simple by being mindful with animations and videos. Um, these are things you want to limit, or if you're having them, they should have low speed, be captioned, very easy to process. If you're um, using columns, for example, of text, if you're using two columns of text, make sure you use the column tool and not the spaces or the tabs. And I will exit here out of presentation mode just to show you what I mean. So if we wanted to make this uh, two columns, instead of tabbing, tabbing or using indentation or something like that, Right, we want to make sure that we use the columns tool, which is up here in the home tab of the ribbon. Oops, excuse me, right here. You make two columns. The reason is that uh, screen readers will be able to interpret this as two columns. If you just create a spaces or tab stops, etc., it will read across, right? So using the column tool tells a screen reader that this is one column, the text should be read in this order and continue down in the, in the second column. So that is one thing to keep in mind. The same thing is for lists. Instead of, uh, if you're typing text, instead of typing a dash, right, to create your list, you wanna make sure you're using the list feature and you'll notice here the list feature is selected or it can also be the numbers feature, but either way, it should be one of these two items so that the screen reader, again, knows that these are lists and can um, point that out to the person. If you're using tables, same thing. Please do not paste in a picture of a table. Do not merge and split cells. Just use the very basic uh, table tool here in PowerPoint. It's very easy to use and that will tell the screen reader as well that, um, that we have a table here. The next thing I want to bring up um, is uh, speaking of charts. So if you do need to use charts, um, you know, one thing to keep in mind is again, what is the difference between this chart and this chart? Well, this chart, like I mentioned earlier, uses uh, hue and bri sorry, uses brightness and darkness to distinguish between the elements. These, these colors are actually very close, even for someone who uh, isn't visually impaired. I actually find it quite difficult to go back and forth between the series and the legend and the actual series themselves to see which color is which. Here, it's a lot more stark and a lot easier to interpret. And if you go into the view tab, and you click on grayscale or black and white, let's do uh, black and white. This is essentially how a person with color blindness may experience the slide. It's still so much easier for this person, even for me, to, um, to interpret this chart versus this one. These shades of gray are very, very close and very tricky. So this is a great tool. If you go up to the view tab and change it to black and white, you will see how your whole presentation may look to a person experiencing color blindness. And going back to this example, right? If they see these as all, all the same, they, it might be a, a shade of gray here, but you'll notice it's very hard to distinguish, whereas here at least we have the text overlaid on top. So that is a tool within PowerPoint I wanted to point out that I would highly recommend using. It's also a great thing to check every once in a while if you're printing your presentation. Uh, it's nice to see how it looks if you decide to go uh, black and white and not waste some of the ink, the color ink. The other thing to keep in mind is when you are presenting live in front of people to speak loudly or get amplification. I think a lot of people are sometimes nervous about holding a microphone, but unless you have an incredibly strong lung power and you are very used to speaking loudly in a loud in environment and you are, you are very aware that you have this ability, chances are it will still be helpful for you to have amplification. So never refuse a mic if you, uh, if you have the option, I highly recommend it. Or if you are speaking uh, in a webinar, make sure you have a microphone or some kind of audio system that is recording your, vo your the volume and also the quality of your voice. Now, when you're presenting, a couple other tips that are really helpful, you could consider giving out a handout before the presentation so people can follow along. Um, you can also just create a handout for afterwards so people can refer back to your presentation and go back to anything they may have missed. I, I will show you very briefly how that looks, but I just wanna also point out that you may wanna leave time for Q&A and make sure you include a microphone. Leaving time for Q&A allows for anyone who might have missed something or needed clarification to voice their concern, voice their question, and have it answered. So speaking of handouts, what is a PowerPoint handout? If I go to print my presentation, this is what a handout looks like. So instead of printing a full page, page slide or any of the other options here, you have handouts which allow you to uh, print the, the, the slides as thumbnail, 
thumbnails uh, and multiple per slide. And you have the option of how many you want to include. I personally like the three slides with the lines because this allows people to type, uh, I'm sorry, to write text next to each slide in order to take notes. But if you just wanted to give someone uh, just the, the slides themselves, they can find uh, write their own notes or find a space around them to write their notes. That is also an option. Now you can, you'll notice I have customized my handout master here. So uh, if I go back to the uh, view tab, there is a handout master here, which allows you to add any kind of graphical elements or um, branding to this document as well. Okay, so section 508, what is it and how do we become compliant with it? Section 508 refers to a section of the Rehabilitation Act that prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in federal programs or programs receiving federal aid or employment. It refers to many forms of access, including to information and communication technology, from websites to documents, printers, desktop and mobile software, etc. Now for presentations, it mostly refers to all the steps we've already discussed, right? The great best practices that you can implement, but also very importantly to making sure your slides work well for screen readers. Now PowerPoint has responded to this and created a very robust tool called the Check Accessibility Tool that makes it easy for you to see how accessible your presentation is and how well you're doing uh, with regards specifically to screen readers. Now, if I go back into PowerPoint normal view here, if I go to the view tab, you will see, oops, the review tab, excuse me. If I click check accessibility, I will pull up a whole list of warnings and errors, things that are missing that are gonna make things more difficult for a screen reader. And so this is something really important to go through at the very end of your presentation and make sure that you uh, apply these fixes and um, are very aware of the errors that are coming up. I will address these here in just a second, but I wanna show you um, the, the tips for working with screen readers. The most important thing is establishing a logical reading order. A screen reader essentially is going to read from top to bottom, beginning to end, right? That is what makes sense for a presentation. So if you have a presentation, uh, a slide, for example, that has a title, well, you want the title to be read first and then all the content uh, that flows after that to be read in that order. So you need to tell the screen reader which thing to read first. So if I go to reading order pane, I will see here that actually one of the errors that we had listed earlier up here check reading order, is that the title is actually, um, oh, sorry, this one. The title is actually being read second. So we wanna make sure that we bring this up, you can use a little arrow, and that will remove the little warning that we had here, the error message. So we wanna make sure that the title is read first and the content afterwards. And any content that you wanna read, be read successively after this needs to flow in this order. So check the reading order. Um, and then if you're building templates or presentations using a lot of things and a lot of content, you wanna make sure that you um, uh, follow these best practices for how to insert things so that the reading order is correct. Now the next step you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you add alt text. What is alt text? Alt text is essentially text that lives in the background that tells the screen reader to read, uh, read the text about a particular image. You, it also works for charts. And you'll notice here, one of the errors is we have missing alternative text for these two pictures and for these two charts. So we wanna make sure that we add text. What kind of text do we add? Well, it needs to be uh, descriptive, but less about what the image looks like and more about what its purpose is. So to convey the meaning of the image. Now, if you just have an image that's decorative, it's just like this, for example, might be an image. Uh, it's on the slide master, so it's not showing here, but this would just be marked as decorative. It's not important to the, to the content of the, of the slide. So it does not need to be read. Now for hyperlinks, you wanna make sure that you use uh, text, whether you put the entire URL spelled out or whether you put an actual uh, word there that says, you know, um, uh, link to the, you know, Section 508 government website. And that is the link because just saying click here or here is, is very, um, has no context, is very difficult for someone to, to know what you're trying to convey. Now, don't make, don't, blah, make sure that you don't add vital information to the slide master, for example. So if you're adding, uh, let's say you wanna add a, a bit of text that says confidential or you know, some kind of watermark, well, the screen reader would not be able to read that if it's just text placed on the slide master. You'll need to put it here in the normal view or you can put it as part of the footer. You can type it in here and say confidential, et cetera, et cetera. So that is something to keep in mind if you want someone to know that your information is confidential, but they're using a screen reader and it doesn't read that out to them, they will not know it's confidential. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. 
Now, at the very end here, I have some uh, resources for you that you can absolutely go to for more and in-depth information. We have this one about alt text that is very, very thorough, gives lots of examples. If you wanna know more about alternative text, it's very, very useful. So please feel free to type those in and I will include them in the description down below as well. So that's how to make your presentations more accessible as well as Section 508 compliant. Now again, most of these tips are general best practices, especially if your presentation is occurring in a setting that you can't necessarily control or that you're unfamiliar with. So feel free to take these tips and apply them to your regular presentations every single day. Now, if you found this video helpful, please leave a comment in the arrow down below. Tell me what you found useful or if you have any fewer questions, I respond to every comment. And please give it a thumbs up to let us know you want more videos like these. If you want to subscribe to the ASAP YouTube channel, please go on ahead and do that. Or you can head over to my YouTube channel at Nuts and Bolts Speed Training for more tips and tricks about PowerPoint. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.